Hey, we are back. We're 10, we're, 15 minutes late, but we're here. We are 12 minutes late. Okay. Sorry, folks. I uh, had an issue with a computer that is rebooting, and it is still rebooting after 20 minutes. <laughs> so, right. Um, so let's do some sharing. I had to do uh, Jim Miller's on a, a little bit of a uh, backup, so to speak. So hopefully everything is okay. I think I might have to do a hard reboot on that computer. I don't know. Something like that. Matter of fact, why don't I just do that right now? Oh, wait. It was on number two. It's just as soon as I hit it, it goes to number oh, two. Good deal. Don't you love forced updates, people? I swear. Krishna is watching. Hey, Chris. Hey, Jim. What is going on this evening? Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's getting ready for turkey season here in Michigan. We'll get going with the show here in just a moment as soon as we get done doing a couple of quick shares as we always do. Sorry we're a little late tonight, like I said. Technical issues behind the scene here. Oh, and guess what? My iPad wants to do a software update as well. I don't think so. Danny, would you like a reboot? Uh, no. Okay. You sure that you're okay? Maybe you want to reboot. I'm good. Too. All right, just checking. I'm good. We'll plug you into something, reboot you if we need to. Right. All righty here, let's see. Man, what a wet, wet weekend here in Michigan. Or at least wet Sunday, I should say. Right. Not to mention cold as well. Did you have a good weekend, Dan? Yes, I did. Good deal. All right. Now I can start sharing. Here we go. There's one. And... Let's see. There's two. And one more. I get one more after this. There we go. I'm ready. Almost. All right. Yeah, hopefully everybody's having a good weekend this weekend here, so. Uh, Got our Hunter's Blend coffee. I do have Hunter's Blend. You know, and speaking of that, uh, for those of you, go to huntersblendcoffee.com. When you put in the UNJ promo code in their little uh, drop-down menu there, you can put in UNJ, and you'll get 10% off your order of Hunter's Blend coffee. So go on over there and check them out. All right, Tom is on. Actually, we throw up their page there, huntersblendcoffee.com. Don't spill that. Almost did. All right. So are you ready? Yep, let's do it. Okay. Let me get recording here. Make sure that's rolling. Thank goodness I got my portable recorder. That was the problem. I had to run outside and get it out of the Jeep. Right. So uh, we are rolling there. And we are rolling there. All right. You ready, Danny? Yep. Stand by. And in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. And host Mike Adams sitting in the cabin tonight on a rainy, cold Sunday with Dan DeFall and a hot cup of Hunter's Blend coffee. You know, it might be rainy, it might be cold outside, but as I was driving in out in the field right just before your house, your four... My residents were there? Four resident birds were out there, and Mr. Tom was in the middle of strutting and stuff. Was he? Yes, he was. He, he was in full strut in the rain, huh? He was. He was looking at him going, hello. Who was it we were talking to? Oh, it was It was uh, when we were at the turkey workshop. Um, the DNR officer, Mr. Dan Prince, said, doesn't matter what the weather is, get out and hunt. It, it doesn't matter because... Cold their, rain? Their biology... Their biology go, <laughs> biological clock is ticking that it's mating season. Right, right. Come rain or shine. Yeah, that's right. Rain, sleet, or snow. It's kind of like the postman. Yeah, right? You know, I tell you what, it's been, yesterday was is up, up here in Michigan, you were in Indiana, but uh, man, yesterday was sunny and, and a little breezy, but mm -hmm. it was comfortable. Right. Um, but today, actually it started last night, but today was just, yeah. When I left down there at 9 o'clock last night, it was 55 degrees-ish, 
It was about 55, I think, if I remember right. And when I got out of the Jeep at home here in Michigan, it was 37 degrees. Did you hit any any of the weather? No, not a bit. Oh, you stayed in front of it. Yeah, it was windy. Right. Um, we heard a clap of thunder. 7, 7.30-ish. Okay. Maybe 8 o'clock. Yeah, probably 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock. Hanging the last tree stand. We're kaboom. <laughs> you know, we're down in the swamp bottom and you you know it's cloudy most of the day and you kind of look up and you're hoping you don't see like a thunderhead or anything but uh right. you know when we finally got back out into the field and turned around and looked it was like i don't know you could see it on the horizon we loaded up got everything taken care of and started out and now stayed pl- plenty far enough ahead of it hey randy duncan what's going on man that's awesome so so you brought the bad weather with you then in tow no i didn't bring it with me i was trying to run away from it yeah well it hooked onto your trailer and it got up here i'm i'm not claiming this man no uh, you i'm gonna blame you this was nasty nasty but stuff. yeah so you were you were down in indiana prepping the um property with the packer max and company yep and uh working working away with that it looked like you were uh actually the person on the four wheel looked like he was enjoying himself zipping around when you did that live hit yeah, I'm trying to remember who that was. I think that was Tony Gertz. Yeah, he was doing some soil sampling. Yeah, he was he was having a good time. Yeah, was he? <laughs> he was zipping around. Yeah, yep. So, did you get any feedback from the guys when you brought the pack max? Did they like it? Did they? We'll talk about that in All a minute right. because uh, actually, I, I really want to talk about what you did this weekend because uh, you got to do something. F- I mean, I'm not saying that our stuff wasn't fun. It was fun. I had a good time, but w- we had a lot of work involved. You had something enjoyable. Well, I almost think it's mandatory that you do this uh, before you head out. Uh, season this turkey season is coming up on the horizon. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether you're going to be shooting a bow, crossbow, uh, shotgun in this case, uh, get out and pattern the gun. Absolutely. And uh, so last year I had uh, one of my barrels ported. I won that at a at a at a dinner. Okay. So I had it magnet ported. Um, so I was like, okay, I got to get out and shoot these things. Right. So I had exactly what I did. I took them, uh, took my wife, Deb, and we went over to Williams Gun Site. Mm-hmm. Um, and we went on the gun range. And uh, it was it was, it was was sunny. Yeah, I could see the sunshine it on was, the guy's face there. It was a little wet, which I think I, I don't know if I've ever been there and it's been dry. You know, <laughs> that there's a creek that runs by there, and when it floods, it floods. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. So it's wear your boots spot. for sure. And uh, like you see in the background of the picture there, we got some targets up. Uh, those were just paper targets that I had, had a turkey head on. I have those, uh, also those other targets as well that show when you hit like uh, a kill shot, it turns colors. Mm-hmm. But um, one thing I liked about those is because I was shooting at about 30 yards and um you could shoot downrange, and you could see exactly where you were hitting. Okay. Where those were a little bit tougher. I had the binoculars out, and I'm looking, looking. But, uh, yeah, it was just it was a great day. Uh, we sighted in the 12 and the 20. Both of them have now been ported. And I tell you what, it makes that 20-gauge shoot even nicer than it did before. But it helps definitely helps the recoil on the 12. Okay. It's still pretty stout, which I'm not a fan of. Uh-huh. But it helps. Okay. So I'm excited about that. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. Okay. So uh, suggesting anybody, if you're, if you're having a gun with an issue like that, think about having it magnaported. Um, they did um, a great job. So I, I give kudos to Magnaport over in Harrison Township. And um, I don't know, maybe shot uh, a dozen shots total. I didn't have to sight in the the. If the 20 gauge seemed to be on a lot better than the 12 was, but whatever, I shot it and got it to where it needed to be. So up to 30 yards, mm-hmm. I think I'm quite happy. Well, what I'm seeing there, you know, the picture before, seeing you, you know, get your guns out, you, you and the missus sitting there. This other picture we're looking at right now, I don't see anybody else around. Was it busy? I tell you what, that was the weird thing. I thought for sure, because I've been to a gun range, uh, another gun range that I used to go to that. If it was, like, close to an opening day of something, mm-hmm. it was going to be busy. Okay. But I got there, and there was uh, there was one other gentleman before us shooting his turkey gun. And right to the left of the picture there, you see that's the handgun area? Mm-hmm. And there was three people in there. Okay. And 
I started. He left. I got on the on the table, and all of a sudden, two of the three guys left, and it was down to one guy, and that was it. And then I think maybe there was one showing up when we were leaving. But on a Saturday afternoon in April. On a Saturday at noon in April, it was. There was more people over at the um, long distance range for the rifles. Okay. There seemed to be, geez, there must have been like two dozen guys over there. Okay. But uh, I tell you what, it was it was actually nice. It was kind of enjoyable that we could just take our time. I, I didn't feel rushed. Uh-huh. You know, like when you get a lineup behind you, everybody's like, come on, come on. Right. You know. um, but it was great. Um, I broke out those new uh, earmuffs that I, I bought from, um, it was Bass Pro last year, the Pelotors, I think they were. Okay, that's know. the ones you got on there? Yeah. And uh, the, the, they're the ones see that. see it peeking through in the yeah. picture. Uh, they're the ones that amplify when you're just talking normal. Right. But when you go to shoot, it it blocks out the sound. And? Awesome. You like them? I do. It was... I was quite shocked. It, I I was impressed the fact that when we were just talking normal, I could hear the amplification. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I went to shoot, it was like, oh, okay. okay. Uh, Michael Fairfield's asking it. Williams, yes. Williams Gunsight. Now, uh, Williams Gunsight Company. They changed the name here in the last, I don't know, five, ten years. I still refer to their old name, the Williams Gunsight and Outfitters. For right, that exactly. That was their old name. But yeah. It, yeah, so, Michael, that's where he was shooting at. Yeah, and I tell you what, they I was shocked. I, I truly was shocked that there was not more people out there. Um, it, and the, it was it was nice. We, we took our time. We got some time to do some shooting. I shot some uh, five and six shot uh, through the 12, and... They're about the same at mm-hmm. that distance. Uh, the 20 was, I got fives. It's very hard to find anything else in 20 like that. It is. Yeah, I've had and, the same and, trouble. And I tell you what, it's a three inch that I'm shooting through the 20. And it just, it's just, I don't know if it's the gun itself or, or what it is, but it just is nice and it smoothly shoots. I just like it. Did you shoot, shoot that a lot before you had it magnaported or did you buy that and then have it magnaported? I shot it a few times before I had it. Magnaported, and it's more it, the gun instead of coming up pulls back more. Okay, and it, it does a great job. And I so really you don't like have it. muzzle jump. Yeah, gotcha. And, and same thing with the now the twelve gauge is, is the twelve gauge just is a mule. It gotcha. Just, it's it hurts. You know, I, I see everybody you know, kind of popping in here. Uh, you know, we mentioned Randy Duncan, who was with me yesterday. Lincoln Roan, who uh, actually we got something we're going to talk about with him. Uh, one of his products here coming up. And uh, Michael Fairfield from Easy Cut, sporting the shirt tonight, Michael. Uh, we used their products down there yesterday. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, so we got some guys here that we're going we're gonna to be highlighting some of the products that they deal with. So, you, you know what? Stay tuned. A uh, good, uh, good comment by Mike uh, on their out indoor range. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a few people in there. Uh, inside was pretty busy. Uh, but that I look through the windows at the range. That looks really nice. It is beautiful inside that range. I mean, you cannot even tell people are shooting in the range when you're standing. On no, the other you side can't. Of the wall. You can't. Um, I've actually shot a lot of video in there. Yeah, you did. For uh, I, I do like I, I've said before, I do some side work with them through my my regular employment. Uh, we do the Sunday night segment of On the Trail, and I don't know how many times I've been in there shooting the video. And I I, I am just, every time I go in there, I am just. Blown away at how nice that indoor range is. It, it looks nice. It's I mean, beautiful. there was two or three people that were in there, and I think there was a couple waiting because they got little tables there. They're really right. waiting to go in. And yeah. Of course, when we after we got done shooting, um, uh, we put the guns away, and we needed to find a holster for Deb's pistol. Okay. And I want, and it says all sales final. Mm-hmm. So I wanted someone to help us to make sure the fit and everything. And, um, you know, you want a clip on, you want a belt, right. answer the questions. And But while waiting in line, I was staring at this wall of guns. <laughs> was the drool just running out of your mouth? I looked at Deb and I said, this ain't good. Okay, time out. Which wall of guns were you looking at? Um, actually, I was split. If I looked to, a little to my right, they were semi-automatic handguns. Right. And if I looked to my left, they were revolvers. And if you move a little bit further down, right there, or, was, there was the the AR platform style. Yep, at the rifles. end was the AR. Yep. Yep. Or if you turned around, you looked at the the Sig Sauer. 
Uh, that's my favorite display. I here. know. I walked over and I stared. Uh, it was bad. I was trapped. I was on. I was trapped on three sides. It, it wasn't good. So I I did look at it an M and P, and I was like, wow, that's nice. I said, I gotta get out of here. Yes. She goes, yes, you know, they're yes, like, yes. well, you know, you you put it on layaway. That's right. You put it on layaway. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 So, but we got her a great um, holster for her gun. It fits perfectly. What it's did you leather. go with? We went with the leather beyond. Bianchi, Bianca, Bianchi, Bianchi. Yeah, I think that's uh, how you it, it. It, it. She wanted the one that uh, she feeds the belt through, so she can carry it up north. And is is it uh, outside the outside the waistband? Yep. Okay. So, but we made sure it fit right and it is good. And man, just spent almost a little too long that <laughs> close to that too long in that store. You should have just kept getting a little closer to that that Sig Sauer display, man. I I looked at the M and P. I had it in my hand, and I'm like. I really want a SIG, I think. Yeah. And I, it's like... If, you sh if I took you to the range and let you shoot any I've not shot your SIG. We got to go to the range. <sighs> That's all he, I'm going to say. He showed me the M&P, the, the new 380, mm -hmm. that you basically you can operate the slide with two fingers. Okay. Wow. I mean, it was like... That was amazing. But i like, no, nah, I don't need it. I want a 9. Yeah. I've, so. I've got one you have to try. I've, I will. I'm a SIG snob. I'm, I'll admit it. I, I just... I, I love them. Um... I'm just partial to him. You know, Randy Duncan says, love the easy cut. Yeah, absolutely. Randy got uh, hands-on with that thing yesterday. Did with, he? With quite a few of them, yeah. All right. We got so. So we were, uh, we finished up there, and uh, we took care of that, and um, I think it's all set. I think they're good to go, and brought them home, and I just, I'm going to do one thing, though, is because both of those have a, uh, one's got a red dot, and one's got a true glow on top of it that's, I'll probably go buy two new batteries for the season. Okay. Make sure they're with me. Gotcha. I don't want to be out there and go, hey, where's my dot? <laughs> right. Yeah. And then it's like, how do I shoot this thing with no dot? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So Lincoln Roan agrees. SIG. SIG rocks. I got the, the P320 9 millimeter compact. Um, my primary carry now is the subcompact 1911 model, mm. 45 ACP. Yep. I love that gun. Um, I used to have, uh, I still got it. The P three twenty six, which is what a lot of law enforcement carries. Okay. Um, I love that gun, but it's a full frame. I got a, another subcompact, uh, the P two fifty. Love that gun as well. So, what would be like? What's the like the P three two zero as opposed to the P two fifty? Do you know the difference? Is it? I don't know a lot about the three twenty. Is the it two? The numbers are size. Um, I'm not that okay. I know what I like. You're right. It, well, that's what I mean because the, the 250 is uh, is, a, is a polymer frame. Yep. And it, it's what they they call like what I call a puzzle gun. You can actually interchange parts in and out of it and, and, and add a different slide to it and trigger mechanism and all that. And you can change that gun uh, from calibers. Okay. Different calibers. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. You can have a 40 barrel and a, thir a nine barrel and yeah. switch them out. Yeah. 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 Ooh. Ooh. I like it. Ow. So. I did see silencers in the case there. You saw from Sig Sauer, I think they were. Com you, or suppressors. Suppressors. That's yeah. the thing. Suppressors, yes. The case of suppressors from Sig Sauer. Yes. So, all right. Uh, I tell you what, we're bumping up here on our first break. Let's go ahead. We'll step outside and we come back. We'll continue the conversation either about what Danny did this week about pistols or. What I did in Indiana or something else. If you guys got questions, throw them our way, and we're going to step outside. We'll be right back after this. And for those of you on the live stream, get your questions in. I feel discombobulated today. I mean, I just, I am, I am all out of sorts right now. I don't know why, but I am. All right, let me stop that one. Okay, we ready? Yep. It's a little different, man. I don't have my regular computer to, to run here, so I've just got my portable recorder. I know. Yeah, Michael Fairfield suppressors. Right? Well, because your <laughs> computer's over here rebooting and... Hey, it finally rebooted. Yeah, well. Well, I'm, I'm not going to go through this all and switching stuff out. Right. We're just going to continue to carry on here, so... All right. Uh, anything else here? Nope. See anything on there? All right, here we go. Stand by three, two, and one. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. So, yeah. So that was yeah. our weekend, and you know, you know what? It was it was so nice. And then, 
I got a weather alert, and I'm like, oh, I'm glad I did that. Did that, right? Because I don't know if you heard anything from up north around your camp, but they were supposed to get like three to five. I've not heard from from uh, the our member that lives up there. Yeah, you haven't heard. Okay, okay. I Actually, was wondering. I, th- I think he he may be out of town that possibly this weekend. We'll see. Uh, Lincoln says because it's April, we got five inches of snow today. <laughs> Maybe see, he yeah. got snow. Yeah, yeah. He was he was giving me grief. Uh, earlier today about that they got snow i was like yeah you keep it up there that's for sure we got a lot of rain down here though so well that see that's the thing and rain is okay yeah randy says i'm discombobulated because it was 2 30 a.m when i made it home you're right about that man it was late last night when i got in you got you gotta like that uh late night travel in your prison did you see any deer on the side road or anything yes you did on the way down we saw deer yep uh, right at daybreak, the fields and okay, yeah, the fields there in Indiana, we saw yeah quite a few deer actually. I was just wondering because I think it's about time they start getting out of their their winter doldrums. And, yeah, and start moving around. I noticed mine in the backyard, my little mm-hmm. sanctuary there. Then they seem to be a little bit more on the move in in in, in getting around instead of just kind of hunkering down and yeah. So. Well, and you know down that down further south there where we're at. Um, there was a lot of fresh tracks. The deer definitely moving down there. There's not been snow down there in yeah. several yeah, weeks. Right. So, you know, it's a lot different than it is here in, in middle of Michigan or northern Michigan. So uh, didn't see any deer on the property, uh, per se, until late that evening. I think Randy was on a, a quick four-wheeler guided tour at about 45 miles an hour around the property. That's a quick one. <laughs> so <laughs> I wasn't driving. I wasn't involved in that. But, uh, yeah, he got a quick tour, and he said he saw a couple of deer. So. <laughs> <laughs> running next to the deer yeah the one. yeah it is a big blur but, right uh, so that's awesome so you got up early mm-hmm. you're on your way down there you got down there yep the three musketeers are down there yeah there's mr david boggs there in the middle and uh big randy duncan there on the right and uh you know took randy down and he pitched straight in and started helping man it was uh it was it was a good day i mean it, I haven't been able to hang out with Randy in quite a while, so it was really good to be able to enjoy that four-hour drive down, talk and catch up on things, and the way back as well. That's awesome. You know, it's good good to see him. I haven't seen him in a while. I need to stop by and see him. I got some things to deliver to him anyways. So, um, Oh, Bruce Rhonda Compton, fawns are dropping in South Carolina and turkeys are gobbling. Really? Fawns are dropping already in South Carolina. Man, oh. their rut must be early then. It can be. See, fawns drop. It's April. Our fawns won't drop month here until late May. Yeah, another month out. Yeah, so middle, late May, middle of May, late May, mm. somewhere around there. But uh, yeah, we got down to the property and uh, you know got in and got started right away. Um, it didn't take too long to to get the gear off of the trailer. And first thing in order was to get the Packer Max filled up, filled up and rocking and rolling. So. Yeah, we got uh, got that off and drove up to the barns all the way at the front of the property, you know, three quarters, mile, mile, and a quarter, something away from where we hunt Look at. how clean that thing looks in that picture. It didn't stay that way very long. <laughs> we put that thing through its paces. Uh, so, so you're using a, a garden hose there, it looks like. Well, there's a barn right right to the right of, uh, that's uh, Derek Gentz there. He's one of our new pro staffers for Mossy Oak on the Gamekeeper staff. Okay. And uh, he's a local there in the area, and he comes over and helps. And, you know, we're trying to teach him a few things that we know, and uh, he's helping us out on the property. So it's, you know, it's really nice to have some people help pitch in and, and throw in a little bit of elbow grease while we're doing some work. And I, and I assume it didn't take long to fill that thing up. I couldn't even tell you how quickly it filled. I mean, it, it was as fast as the water would pour into it. You yep, know, exactly. So. But, uh, yeah, we got that thing filled up because uh, what we we're going to do with it is – we were going to have to go back and spray our fields. Okay. So you can see in the photo there, uh, that's one of our guys, Dan, on his quad that he had, and the little wagon behind it is the chemical sprayer. Okay. So you can see the grass there. That's going to be a food plot. The brown is the actual field the farmer uses, and that's going to be soybeans this oh, year. Oh, so, so you got like a, uh, a field on each side of the, the f- food plot lane, kind of? Um, yes, we do. Okay, yep. cool. Yeah, this is just, uh, probably a couple acres here that we've got that he's letting us plant. So he's out doing his thing, spraying the field there, throwing throwing down a little chemical. And, and you used the water from the Packer Max to fill that up. Yes. The very first time we went up there to get water, we took 
the sprayer up with us and we also took up the uh, Packer Max. Put water in both of them, he put chemical in, and then when we got made the big drive back, I mean, like I, seriously, this was this was probably a good mile, right? You know, f away. And it's like, well, do you really want to run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth every time you need water? No, I said, let's use the Packer Max as our our water tank, and it worked great. Filled it up, took it back there when we needed water. We just kind of lifted up one side and poured it out, you know, in, into a. We had a bucket there, and measured everything up, put it in the sprayer, and away oh, we okay. went. It yeah. worked really well. Awesome. So that was really nice to be able to do that. So that that was the, the deal with that. Um, but the, the big thing for the day, the big assignment for the whole day, which I didn't know until we got down there. Things changed. <laughs> the, the plan of attack changed when we got down there. But uh, when we made it down, we walked down into this creek bottom. Okay. And I'm like, okay, so what are we going to do? He's like, we're going to clear this. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> I said, we, we're going to clear this. He said, yeah, this is where we're going to put a food plot in. And we've got a stand site there already where we're going to put a tree stand up. And I'm like, okay. So David was actually there earlier the day before. And there's some old fencing in there. Like, okay. old, you know, from, I mean, like 100 years ago. Oh, geez. You know, I mean, old style fencing where they'd run property lines or whatever. You know, all rusted and dilapidated. So he took some of that out, started cleaning some stuff up. And uh, he said, we're going to take and clear this out. So in doing so, what did we break out? Brought out all the easy cut stuff. You know, we got the, well, you the, got, the you loppers and Randy got you know. his hands on those. Oh, boy, I can see that. He's he's, yeah. he's he, into it already. He's got a home. comment here that said, uh, I think a hand pump would be good add to the toolbox. That way, yep. pull water from the creek next time. But you, but does that creek well, dry up? The thing that we, we talked about with that was... In pulling the water from the creek, I was worried that we, we could do that, but you need good, fast-running, clear water. Yeah. You know, because if you pump dirty water into that, it's going to get into your nozzles and clog your sprayers. It could up. definitely so, clog up the yeah. sprayers. And yeah. But we did think about, once we got down there, I was like, anybody got a pump, you know, that we can use to pump the water out instead of having to lift it up? So, yeah, we, we got to think it through a little better, but it definitely worked for the purposes that we intended it for that day. But uh, no, Randy, he loved he loved the loppers. He loved the loppers. I see he doesn't have them extended, so he's cranking on them. I see that. Yep. And, and away he goes. So let me go back to when we started this. Okay. We cleared all those trees. We did not use a chainsaw at all. The biggest tree we had to cut was probably four, maybe four inches. So it's not really so. trees. Almost like scrub brush. No, they were trees. Okay. These were hawthorns, and and oh. so this stuff was tough. It was it was hard. It was. Really hard, hard wood. You know, I was really surprised at how tough the Hawthorns really are. So we turned Randy loose on that, and as we we're getting things done, we're using the wow saw. We we're cutting with that as well. And you know, as you can see there, we're still not done, but we're we're making progress. And we left the the about a foot, foot and a half sticking up on the the stumps there. And the reason we did that was, if you look here. David had a plan of attack, and what they do, see all those notches are cut in the backside? Yep. If you put a toe strap around it and hook it to the vehicle, when you pull, that toe strap will slide up, catching that notch, and when yeah. it does, it yanks them out of the ground. There you go. So we pulled all the stumps out and got it all cleared up. And Jerry Milos is tuning in, just in time to listen to how you guys used Easy Cut. Hey, Jerry, what's going on? Yes, sir, we, we definitely uh, put, up, put all the tools to work out there that day. So, once we got done clearing everything out, making it accessible. So you got rid of all the stumps. Yep. And now, now with that vehicle in there, it got rutted up. Okay. You know, you're back and forth, back and forth. Ground wasn't soaking wet, but it made some ruts. Is that a minivan? No, that was a Ford Explorer. Its name is Sally. Okay. <laughs> Move on. Won't ask. <laughs> don't, I don't know why, but that's what they call it. So, long story short. Tony Gertz had another brilliant idea. He said, you got the Packer Max here. You got water in it. Why don't we just use that and see if we can roll this ground out and smooth it out? Well, the weight, yeah. It's yeah, I'm like, giant you know I'm like, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. So, you know, here it is down here on the, down in the hole down here. And I started shooting some pics with it. 
And I really think Tony just wanted to ride. Uh, nine times out of ten, when yeah, that's usually how it works. I think that's what it was. You don't ride them enough, then yeah. you find anything to to ride them. Yeah, actually, that's uh, that's Derek right there. He's he's running around on on his quad pulling it, but uh, and actually, we he had a little bit of fun too as well. I mean, he just he yeah, didn't he, want to stop it. He, yeah, exactly. But actually, no, I take that back. If we go back to start picture, I think that is Tony. That might be Tony right there riding that one. It is. But, uh, yeah, they both had fun. We, we, we rolled this thing around. But it, if you go back here with, when Derek's on it, look how the ground is starting to firm up and, and get smooth. Well, you think about it, that's, that's 400 pounds, right, filled, and you're crushing up some nice soft dirt. You know, I think it, would, I think it, would, it, it almost kind of works because you're digging in with the Vs, but yet, and then you're just, and it, was, it looked like it was, it was pretty muddy. So yep. it was being scraped off by the the bar, anyways. Right. Yeah, it worked great down there. I, I was I was totally blown away at what it looked like when we got done. I mean, it it just leveled everything right out. And going back to to this photo right here, that ground back there was fairly dry. And when he was making those turns right there, right, the grooves in that Packer Max was cutting the ground and churning it. And it was almost like it was raking and busting that ground up and getting ready nice. for planting. So. I, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. So that is really good to know. So between between that and the Easy Cut products, we busted that whole area out in less than four hours. There you go. What are you planting down there? Ask David. Don't know. <laughs> he's got David. He's, if you're listening, what are you? Planting? He's got the David Boggs mix going on. Oh boy. And uh, and there's a tree stand overlooking the plot right there. So there you go. You got the the tree stand up, ready to go. Yeah, that was the uh, X stand, tree stand. I think it was the general, 22 feet. That thing is up in the air. Now, this is going to be. Did you you did seed it right? No, we did not. Oh, we, you did not. Okay. okay. No, no. There's a story behind that. So. So then this is going to be a fall plot. No, they wanted to seed it that day, but it, or this weekend, coming weekend, but it it's not going to happen as of yet. Okay. The, the problem was we were going to spray that okay. yesterday. You seen the picture of the little buggy he was pulling behind? Yeah, know. yep. The, he was pulling the, right the sprayer. Yeah, there's a sprayer. Okay. Well, if you look real close, about 20, 15, 20 feet to the right of that, between him and the, the Packer Max there, there's a ditch. Okay. He got a little too close to the ditch and it rolled. <laughs> oh! And it broke. It broke the uh, the the pressure uh, pressure gauge off of it. And when it broke the pressure gauge off, oh, there was no way to pressurize it and right. be able to use it in the spray. Wah wah! So he uh, he got he got almost the whole field done, and then he was going to come down and do that spot down there and, and it rolled it. Yep. So yeah, it knocked the pressure gauge off. Ain't going to pressurize him. So yeah. That's okay, so plan B then is to do it another time. Yes, yeah, we still got a couple of weeks to get get seed on the ground down there and get it growing. So, uh, so then that's going to be a summer plot. Are you gonna? Is that plot going to be used in the fall as well? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. You're going to get a little something in there, get it going, and then uh, have a fall plot planted as well. Gotcha. 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 So, but, but yeah, it looks like the combo of the Packer Max and Easy Cut. Uh, about roughly how big of area were you guys looking at? Close to an acre. Close to an acre? Yeah. There you go. Yep. So a couple easy cut tools, a Packer Max, one four-wheeler. Yep. And a bunch of guys that want to ride it. Yep. There yep. you go. Yep. You know, and it was uh, with with three wow saws and two lopping shear uh, of the ratcheting loppers, uh, we made short work of that area. Absolutely, really well, quick. That's that's so. that's a good thing. That's that's the purpose of the easy cut. Easy cut. Yeah, you know, make things easy and cuts up fast. And sounds like as fast as you could cut them, David was hauling them out of there. Well, that was the thing. There was there was four of us working with tools. Four or five of us can't remember. And then there there were seven of us there total, and two people hauling debris and stacking it. And and that's the thing is we we shaped that. I tell you what, let's take a break. We come back. I'll, I'll talk a little more about the actual plot and the okay. reason we did things the way we did them. So we're gonna step outside real quick. We'll take our next break, and we'll be right back after this. Okay, save that one off. And. 
Here we go. You ready? Yep. Okay. Three, two, and one. Welcome back. Third segment of the show. Still down in Indiana. Actually, you you were down in Indiana. You got a bunch of guys with easy cuts mm -hmm. and a Packer Max. Yep. In the forest. Mm -hmm. Cutting in a new. Was this a new field? This is going to be a new new plotted area. Yeah, well, yeah, you yep. saw the picture okay. before. I didn't know if they, they sprinkled seeds in between before. No, 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 no. Okay. No, actually, uh, you know, this this is really the first full season that we're going to be in there working on this place and, and getting it ready for season. Uh, you know, last year, I wasn't a part of the group last year, and uh, it it was just a quick rush in and, and hunt a couple times on it and kind of get lay of the land. But this is the first full season of really getting things going. So Right, exactly. And you're right, Lincoln. It's always good to see the uh, – as far as anything, uh, the, especially in this case, the Packer Max being utilized in other ways. Yeah, absolutely. It's just not a, a, a one-trick pony. No, and actually, you're talking about carrying water. Um, I was talking with Lincoln, I don't know, a month or two ago, and he had mentioned that he's got a guy that, that puts these pools out. Yeah, yep. Watering holes. He has man-made watering holes uh, to get, get them out and away from the areas uh, where there could be possible EHD when, when those grounds dry up. You know, in the midge, uh, right. larvae sprout out and come out, but he's trying to keep these these areas, uh, the water clean. So he takes Packer Max, fills the water, goes up to his little pool, opens it up. And he puts them right at ground level, so he could just pull right up next to it. And empty it right into it. And just un hits the, the plug, and it, it he just lets it unfill yep. it and be done with it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea. I, lo I love it. And it's a $3 pool. Or whatever he was using, but you can use a blue pool. Yeah, three bucks. Yep. You know, put it, put it, dig a hole, put it in the ground, and make a watering hole. Exactly, it's and awesome. Use use the Packer Max as your water tank. You know, and that that is that is pretty cool. But yeah, definitely the way to other utilize the Packer Max. Mm -hmm. Like you said here, you filled it up, so it was four hundred some odd pounds. In soft dirt, you're, it was, those turns was just digging it right in. Yeah, as it was turning, it was cutting and turning and churning and tearing that ground up. You know, uh, getting it. it was, when we got done, I was like, "Man, we could we could go ahead and throw a seed down right now." You know, but yeah. they still wanted to spray it because there was still some uh, vegetation they wanted killed off. Right, absolutely. So. It's always good if you, if you are in a in a place where you can actually get in there, spray it, mm -hmm. let that die for a week or two, and then come back and then. Hit it one more time, and then that's always the best. Yep, yep. So, um, 40 gallons of water. Yeah. Wow, Lincoln, you read my mind. Oh, 320 I was, pounds. I was just getting ready to, to ask the question about, I wonder how many gallons that holds. 40 at eight, 8 pounds a gallon. So, there you go. Plus, the Packer Max is about 50-some pounds itself. So 55. So, there you go. So, so yeah, right. but good to see. So, you... Um, you did you make it into any special shape, a kidney bean, or did you? Yeah. It's kind of like an hourglass type shape. Um, oh, okay. And as, and as you saw in some of the photos there, we left a few of the bigger trees there, and it's it's kind of what I call, and I've heard this term used. It's not my term, but I, I like it. It's called a dirty food plot. It's it's not your typical rectangle. It's not your typical square or a circle. It's irregular shaped. You've also got other things that are kind of protruding into it or out of it, you know, and it allows it to look a little more natural. And the trees we left in there were strategic, yeah, easy for everybody easy else. Easy for you to say? Strategically left in a certain place to give the deer a little more comfort between the the food plot and the stand where the stand was. Well, I tell you what, the, uh, talked about this, uh, might have talked about this before, but yeah. It's also another way of, it, we'll just take a, a circle or a square. Mm -hmm. If a deer can come in at one end of the field and just stand there and, and be able to scout the whole entire, yep, it doesn't serve you any any good. Right. Especially if you're at the other end. Right. Right. You know, if you got to make him walk half the food plot and then come around a tree because he's got to see, you know, there well, you go. That's why certain sections of that old fence was taken out. You know, where they were jumping it and crossing, we put debris so it would force them to go through that opening. Yep, Instead, exactly. It made the opening big enough they could, hey, look, we don't have to jump. There's an opening. 
We'll walk through it. Yeah. And then when they get there, they're like, oh, wait, I'm only looking at half of a food plot. I got to go over there yeah. to get to the other end of it. And now I feel an arrow going through me. Th that's that's the hope, <laughs> that's, right? That's the hope. And you're right, Michael Fairfield. It's more of a natural shape. It is. And it, it plays into the hunter's hands of making the deer work. Yep. Um, I can't think of it. Oh, that is one of uh, Ed Spinzola. I know who you're talking about. That Easy guy. Easy for you to say. Yeah, right. <laughs> that guy. Um, he's, he loves doing that uh, and breaking it up into different higher lanes so that it makes the deer kind of work its way. Work its way through it. Yep. yep. You know, and, and then those trees uh, strategically placed, okay, yeah, it does blo block off a, a couple 40, 50 yard shots. Okay, so it does that. But then, you know what? It gets that deer in, lets them feel comfortable, start feeding. And then is a transition point. There's four, there's four lanes that come in through there. Okay. We're forcing them to go in certain directions by before we put debris piles on the edges. That way it forces them, you know, if we're going to transition through, whether they're coming or going, they're eventually going to work out into that opening between that those trees, we a couple trees we left and where our stand is. You know, that's, that's right. Let them get comfortable, let them feed, and then when they're getting ready to exit and come on through, then you take your shot. That's when you ambush them. Right. No, that's awesome. That, it's know. good planning. Because, like, like the, the picture um, of the fields there, you know, you stand at one end, you can see all the way to the other end of the field there. Oh, yeah. You know, that's... That's a 400-acre field. I right. Mean, I mean, it, it, exactly. So, you know, from one end to the other, I mean, you're only seeing a small part of, of the, that field there. Yeah, just for instance, if you're at the other end of there with, with a bow blind and you're waiting and all of a sudden Mr. Buck is standing where, where we can see, he goes... Oh, yeah. yeah, there's nothing down at that end. I don't need to bother going there. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. You know, that that's one of those things. But it's it's all about the planning, the planning of how you're going to plant it, uh, work the, mm -hmm. the soil and land, and kind of already thinking towards fall of you already got your setups up. You just kind of let them become more familiar with it and just... Well, that was the thing, too, is, you know, that we, we set up three stand, three more stands this weekend. Uh, the one there that I showed you, let me get back to it there. Uh, that sits over top of this plot, you know, the stands facing the plot, and that was probably that was the tallest one we put up. We put another one up down on the creek bottom, all the way down in on the creek, and that was a double set. And then we put a hang-on stand um, in another spot. So, you know, talking about the tools we used, we got to use, uh, you know, Dan Dan Carr actually purchased one of the kamikazes. Okay. And he had it with him. I'm like, let me have that bad boy. <laughs> you know, let me try so, it out. So, you know, we had the bowl saw, in, which is really nice. You know, you can you can take and reach up and cut. You don't have to reach way out because it's, it's got a 20 foot reach on it. Right, exactly. You know, and, and that saw cuts like through. butter? Yeah. It's amazing. It is. It is. It's amazing what they've come up at Easy Cut for, for uh, weight and length. It was yeah. funny because some I can't remember who it was. Somebody was using it, and you know they're they're pushing the song. I'm like, dude, no, no, cut on the backstroke. It's so much easier, right? You know, and it's like, zip, 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 boom, down come the limb. And it's like, wow, cut on, the, cut on, the, you, you know, it's easier to pull than it is yeah. to push. Yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. I see Josh Hagerman's tuning in. Josh, what is going on, my man? And by the way, Josh, the bike is okay. <laughs> It was a connection uh, between the battery and the connection on. Oh, I didn't, yeah, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about that. Yeah, yeah, the Rambo. Um, at some point, I got something in the prongs that fit in to the battery. Yeah. Okay. Didn't notice I, it wasn't making contact. I'm like, the bike doesn't work. So but it works. But it works. Yeah. And I got to thank Derek for that because he started looking at it and he's like, "Hey, we got some trash in here. It's not making good contact. Put it down, slid it down, and." Away we went. Zipping around you went. Yeah. Well, I wish we'd have figured that out at the beginning of the day. I wouldn't have had to pedal across the field. <laughs> so it was easier than walking. Right. Exactly. You're right, Mike. And, and, and it weighs about seven pounds, the pole saw. Is that what it weighs? That's what he's saying. Yeah. That's I know what I'm assuming because we're talking pole saw. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, uh, yeah, that sounds about right. That's pretty good. Well, Josh, if that's what you figured, then why didn't you tell da David that when you talked to him? <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time, man. Uh, no, right. it, so. it, uh, 
I was a little, I was frustrated, you know, because I had charged the battery the night before, had everything loaded on on the Jeep and and, and on the trailer, ready to go, and. I thought, you know, I, I need to put this on just make sure this battery's charged, charged. Right, exactly. Just, you know, how you are. Yep. So I put it on before I left, turned it on, everything fired up. Okay, good. Turned the battery back off, put it in the Jeep, and, and then I get down there, and I couldn't get it to work. So I was like, oh, man. So you're right, Jeff. Uh, preparation adds to the hunt. Absolutely. And, and, and plus, with all you guys working together, it's not – I know you, you get this into some, in some places where – a couple of people do all the work, and other people reap the benefits, and they yeah. take all the glory. And yeah, right. So yeah, we know that way. when you get when you get you know, it's hard to get a few guys to work together on a common goal and everybody agree. The larger that group gets, the more friction there is within the oh, group. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it, it's it's even though we all love to hunt, you know, we've all got different ideas about what that means. Yeah, oh, absolutely. There's different, well, there's different levels of education within that too. Of, of you know, of who who has spent a lot of time and tried to learn different things like habitat and wild game management and those well, types of things. And it's and what we, you want to make of it. Is it exactly what, what's the experience you want out of it? You know, if you want to be the guy that goes up on November 14th here in Michigan and okay, uh, tomorrow's opening day. I'm going to spend three days. That's it. Going to come home. That's End it. Of story. That's fine. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, hey, plus a lot of people, that's all they have. Right. You know, uh, unfortunately, uh, other people don't even take time to sight in their gun, and they do the same thing. Right. Um, we, we like it. We have a passion for it. That's why we kind of do it a little bit more than others. Right. And we tend to learn things. And the beautiful thing about what's going on down there with these guys is the three guys I'm working with, we're all like-minded we're all on the same page we all want the same thing we all have that basic that that same knowledge set right others some of us are a little stronger in certain areas than others and that's the the great thing about it because that's where we can start leaning on somebody for one thing and we lean on somebody else for another and then you know they ask me about this and it's it, it's all of us all four of us working together for a common goal exactly and, and it makes it so nice and it, and and it also adds to, it's just not, you'll be up there and see them for a couple of days. It's a it's a whole year thing, you know, it, where you guys are working together so you guys see each other. And it's just not a, hey, I'll see you in September for one day. Right. No. Nope. I've seen David Boggs more in the last five months than I've seen him in the last five years. Right. Exactly. You know, it's, uh, that's what's nice is, is, yeah, I've made, I think this was the fourth or fifth, I think it's the fifth trip I've made down. In the last uh, month and a half, Josh Hageman says yeah. you should have came and knocked out his food plot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that'd go over, Josh. Don't say that when I'm trying to drink coffee. <laughs> I'm thinking that ain't gonna work. <laughs> well, I, I do have, I do have to give him a shout out because the last time I was down, he come down. Yeah, he did, and uh, hung out with us for part about half the day, and uh, was helping us scout for tree stand locations. So. You know, uh, next time I'm down, if you're in the area and you need a little help and I got some free time, let us know. Maybe we'll bust over there and help you with something over your way because uh, we, you know, definitely owe you for the things you've done for us. You know, it, it's one of those things, and that, that's the other part. It's the friendship that's also. Absolutely. You know. You know, you know, with David down there, I've met so many people um, that just great people in the hunting industry. Uh, you know, uh, Josh and I formed a really good friendship. Uh, Dan, Carr, and I, I formed a good friendship. Tony Gertz down there at Katawi Range uh, yep. formed a great friendship. And uh, Brian Calvert, who has Dixie, the the praying right. uh, the praying dog. Yep. You know, Dixie and I and Brian have formed a good friendship. And why are you laughing? Huh? Dixie's a cool dog, man. I, I is a cool dog. <laughs> so. But, but no, yeah, it's, it's no, good. you're right, and that's that's one of the things about hunting that does. It's one. Of, it's about the sport. It's all about you know. Until we'll see when in the fall when somebody shoots somebody else's deer and you guys start fighting. And <laughs> that was my buck. And <laughs> no, and I want to say something right here, right now. This question was brought up yesterday by Randy, because um, because Ra Randy kind of knows some of the things I've been going through. Um, there, there's just when you when you like I said when you hunt with a bunch of people. There's certain little intricacies and things that come up. So 
as we're setting that tree stand, actually the one right here, we got that thing up and he says, so who's, whose area and tree stand is this? Whose area are we prepping down here? Whose food plot is this? Okay. And David Boggs goes, what do you mean? He goes, well, whose is it? You know, out of you four. He goes, it's all of ours. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, there, there is no my spot. There is no my stand. This is, even though we all bring gear in, it's communal property. Right. Anybody can hunt anywhere they want and use whatever they want. It's, and that's what makes it so nice. Right, exactly. Everybody brings something to the dinner table. It's a, it's a, pot, it's a potluck. It's a, it's a potluck. And you, and you all get to partake in the feast. There you go. So, no, I don't, so ha I don't have any deer that's got my name tattooed Not on it. Not yet. No, no. Do that in September. Take a little paint gun with you. There was plenty of deer down there to go around for everybody. There you go. That, that's a good thing. So, no. I'm, like I said, man, if I can put some dough in the, in the freezer, I'll, I'll be happy. Right, exactly. So, you know, you, it, it's always good to put meat in the freezer. Absolutely. But so Randy loved the Packer Max, and he loved the Easy Cut stuff. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, see if we can get him back down to help us out and work work a little more. I am sure he'd be glad to. He was, he was really good at, at, at swinging uh, a, a, a big pickaxe, trying to cut some roots. <laughs> oh, I will say this, man. I am sore as all get out today. Well, you worked all day we yesterday. Worked all day field. pulling, pulling trees and moving them and loading and unloading gear and and, and, and you know working. That's the thing, man. We got a war wagon and everybody brings everything down. They pull it out of their truck or pull it off their trailer and they dump it all on this other trailer. And this thing is is mounted up with chainsaws and and ratchet straps and easy cuts and you name it i mean tree stand parts and right harnesses and climbing ropes and all kinds of stuff and <laughs> we drag this thing with a quad through the forest well yeah you, you got know, to you know stuff bouncing all over and you know hey stop gotta put this back on <laughs> so yeah it, it it's good, man. It's it just, makes it's, for a fun, and it's fun a good, time. It's good work. It's good work. It's, it's good work and it's fun work. Yep. It's not like you're made to go work. No, no, you don't have to twist my arm for this kind of work. Right. So, but I tell you what, we've got. Oh, uh, Randy says he will beg to differ. What's that? On that, I'm sure about swinging the. the oh yeah, the, you know what, Lincoln, you're right. I'm old. You you write about that. The one thing is, I'm like that. Uh, um, Keith uh, has the restaurants, country music singer Keith. Uh, Toby Keith. Toby Keith. Yeah, thank you. Toby Keith song. I'm as good once as I ever was. <laughs> I was good for about half a day, and then you were done. And then I was done. Yep. So. But at least you got home and you're able to make it in your bed and rest today. I couldn't get out of bed this morning. Well, that's another story. <laughs> but, but I tell you what, let's take a break because when we come back, we've got something we want to announce about next week's show that uh, might knock your socks off. So we're gonna actually probably got two announcements. We're gonna step outside and we'll be right back after this. All right, let's save this one off. This is a little disconcerting, you know, using this versus my computer. Actually, my computer, like I said, finally did reboot. I know I'm not. I, I don't see where we're at on the timeline. Yeah, yeah, I know it. It's, uh, I, but I still don't trust that computer right now. I'm gonna have to do some testing tonight. Oh, s sorry, I meant to say my back. So Randy's back must be hurting him from swinging the pickaxe. Oh, I know it is because he texted me this morning, and told me so. So, take two a leave. Call us in the morning. I did that first thing this morning. There you go. See, here we go. Stand by in three, two, and one. Welcome back to the fourth segment of the show. Wrapping up episode 513, and it looks like our live feed is tripping out. It's doing something. Yeah. It's still going. Okay. Well, hopefully everything's okay there. It says live. Is anybody Hold on. on the live feed here, can you still see us? <laughs> Hold on. Let us know. Give it about 20 seconds and we'll find out, right? Right. Yeah. It's showing everything's loaded up there. It's still, so. There it's we still go. Well, that was weird, dude. Yeah, it was. I don't know what happened there. Oh, maybe it did stop. I don't know. We'll see. See if people come rolling in and... 
The wheel keeps turning. Um, that's like at the back of the beginning of the show. But it's showing up here. Well, I'm I'm starting to to spin now. Oh, Josh okay, says he Josh sees us. Okay, Josh says he sees us. Okay, good, good. All right, we'll start this segment back over again. All right, let's do that. Here we go. Three, two, and one. Welcome back. Fourth segment of the show for the second time now because it looked like we were having some technical difficulties. Yeah, it did. It must have. Jeremy Jackson tuning in from Virginia. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for tuning in tonight. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, it was a great weekend down in, or great Saturday in Indiana. Um, it was a great day today. My dad stopped in from you, Alabama. I tell you what. Weather-wise, you lucked out on picking that day. Oh, I was watching the weather all week long because I knew we were going to have a bunch of garbage coming in Ever. and have a window of maybe a day, maybe two, and then more garbage coming right, in. Right, exactly. And we so. got lucky. That worked out really good. So, Because Friday it rained. They got three inches of rain down there. Oh, really? Th Thursday night into Friday morning. Whoa. Okay. So, yeah, so. we got lucky. But um, moving along here. All right. So last segment of the show, we did something Thursday night. Well, first of all, let's start at the beginning because this coming Sunday is Easter. This coming Sunday is Easter Sunday. And we're not going to be doing a live show Easter Sunday. Nope. But we will have a live, well, a semi-live presence on Correct. the Up North Journal Facebook page. What we're going to do is we've already done a interview. We recorded the video portion of it, like what you're seeing now, and we're going to release that as a premiere at 7 o'clock. So 7 o'clock next Sunday, Easter Sunday, it will start playing as we is going to look like we're coming on live. Yep. I will be monitoring. You will be able to comment along the way. I'll be monitoring, and I can comment back and forth. So it will be very much like a live show. The only difference is you won't be able to ask actual questions to our guest because the interview has already happened. We actually recorded it Thursday night. Right. We recorded it Thursday night and in preparation for knowing this was going to be Easter. Yeah. We just don't feel we ought to be doing a live show, sitting in the studio, avoiding our families. And actually, uh, we hope that you've already got your Easter activities out of the way and you're able to watch. And if you're not able to, you will still be able to see this later on at any point in time on Facebook, just like any of our other shows. Right, exactly. And podcasts. So what we're going to do then, um, I think we can do a watch party if we're around. But, uh, yeah, so we ended up having a awesome, uh, somebody says they lost us. Okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering what's going on here with our live feed. Because I know the live feed on the left is back at the beginning. Yeah, it is, but uh, the show here, I can't tell where, where we're at here in this part of the show. I can see you. Okay. Okay. Well, they know what <laughs> we're talking about. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right. It's weird because I'm spinning. You're not spinning. No, no. I don't, honestly don't know what's going on with the feed tonight. Maybe uh, Facebook is acting a little bit weird. So. Oh, that. Well, did you, well, did you hear this morning? No. That uh, Facebook was down. Oh, really? Facebook, Twitter, and whatever other one they have. Instagram? Instagram. We're all down this morning. What happened? Uh, they d I haven't heard, but usually when something like that, they'll, they'll, they'll blame a server or a changeover server. But nobody could get on this morning. And, wow. And I couldn't get on. I was up at about 8 o'clock, tried to get on, couldn't get on. They said it in the 8 o'clock hour news. And probably about 9, 9.30 is when I could get it, get there. But uh, So I didn't miss anything because I didn't get up until 10.30. Right. And so it was just, it was hmm. it was wild because, you know, you usually don't hear that about something going down like that. Mm -hmm. So, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So I would not be surprised if they're having issues. Okay. All right. Yep. There, everybody's saying it's all good there now. Good deal. All right. Well, moving along. So getting back to the next Sunday. So we did this interview on Thursday night. And it was quite possibly one of the, the most inspirational interviews that I've ever been a part of for the Up North Journal. Um, do we want to go ahead and just tell everybody who it is? Well, you might as well because it, 
when when we said inspirational, um, everybody was asking who is it, who is it, who is it, who is it, and uh, actually, as I'm telling the story, yesterday morning heading down to Indiana, I'm sitting there driving down the road, and I'm like, I'm going to tell Randy, and as I'm telling the story, he lets, he just says, I know who it is, and tells well, me, who it is. and I'm like, how do you know? He goes, but, because this guy's been on your hit list for so long. But Randy knows us. He knows Randy you, knows so us. So he knows. But it, I was it, still blown away that he actually figured it out. But really, and this this ended up coming out of the blue. It like, did. Really out of the blue. And so we we knew about his story, what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And we've been following it. And you, you posted it on our page. And lo and behold, Thursday night, 7 o'clock, we interviewed Tread Barda. Absolutely. The one, the only, Tread Barda. And I tell you what. The hard way, the Barda way. And I tell you what, it fits perfectly into Easter. It absolutely does. As inspirational, and it, I mean, this this interview is going to take you basically into a dark place, into the lowest of lows within a fraction of a pound of low, mm-hmm. to coming back basically and onto his next. Adventure. Yep, starting over with a whole new life, and it is. It was. It was riveting to the point where we really didn't have to say much. No, there's. We'd ask a few questions, but if you know Tread Barda, you know the man can tell a story, and he told a story that, like I said, it. If you know somebody who is struggling in life, and. and dealing with things that are making them contemplate what is life worth living. Please, please, please get them to listen to this coming episode. The first the first two segments are very real life. This is what happened to me. This is a, don't feel sorry for me. Don't sit on the couch. This is what c- can almost happen. Mm-hmm. But it didn't, thankfully. I'm going to say divine intervention because he was pretty close, mm-hmm. and if they don't get it by the end of the second segment, go back and listen to it again. Start again until they get it, because the third segment, uh, he talks about a hunt here in the UP of Michigan, right? And which I didn't know about, but you know, he's got great things to say about the UP of Michigan. Yeah, absolutely, and he hit it spot on. Right. And the last one is the last segment of the show. He'll talk about his adventure that he's gonna do all by himself and his dog. Yeah. So. Um, I don't want to spoil too much no. more. There's there's some other things at the end of that show. There's an announcement going to be made at the end of that show by Tread himself. So make sure you, you stay stay tuned in to the very end. Uh, yeah, Lincoln Tread. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's uh, it, it's it's amazing. It is amazing uh, to listen to this man talk. And, so. and 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 a lot of it we didn't know about until he told us. Right. And so it was like, whoa. Yeah. I, it kind of left us speechless. Yeah. A lot of times I was just, I was in, I don't want to say shock and awe, but I was I was just amazed at the strength that he's got. So um, I don't want to give too much away. It's it's a great episode. Yeah, you, you, it's you, you, an it's, hour and 20 minutes. It's an hour and 20 minutes, and we could have been there easily two to three hours if we were, if we would have kept, if we didn't keep him on, on track with the segments. Yeah, we could have been there for three hours, and he would have still. He luckily he got tired. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it was it was something that just kept you right on the edge of the seat. So right, and it's just one of those things that. Yeah, you got to listen to it, folks. I mean, we're I'm not. It's it, I left here last Thursday night. Just wow. Then you're right. It was probably one of our, if not the best interviews. Absolutely. So. You know, Jay Gregory was really good. Uh, on that segment, what we talked mm-hmm. about with him, but that this interview falls on Easter and what he has to say, Ooh. it lines up. Right, it lines up. So, so on that note, what else we got? Okay, so we're gonna be here going into Easter. Uh, after Easter, after we're back, uh, we're gonna have some interviews lined up. Uh, we're gonna be bringing on another sponsor. Mm-hmm. Uh, matter of fact. We'll be talking about, we'll quick, uh, we won't get into too depth of them, but we'll just show you that uh, we've talked about them before on the, the, the show, but uh, 
we'll be bringing on Bucks Baits Sense and Cover Sense. Uh, we'll be bringing them aboard. We'll be bring, having them on the show to talk about their product. They've got a few other products, too. This is a Michigan company, too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, they're right here in Michigan. Uh, here's a scent. Wicks. Wicks. You can drag them behind you. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to bring them on, on board as a uh, sponsor. And we'll be talking with them after. And then we're going to get into turkey season. And who knows what's going to happen then because it's turkey season. And um, we'll, have, we'll probably line up some more interviews after that. And then we'll probably get into, uh, we don't know if we're going to shoot or not. Um, but uh, We're going to start an outdoor archery league, a 3D league this Tuesday. But logistics of things right now, just not quite sure if we're going to be able to jump right, right into it. it. It happened really quick and found out about it. So, But we're going to try our best. So hopefully we have some of that to bring you. I want to give a quick shout out to Tim Sias from Lone Walker Game Calls. Down in West Virginia, their youth season was started this weekend. They took seven youths out and four out of seven shot birds. Oh, is that the numbers? I saw the post yep. of, of, of them. So four out of seven. Four out of seven shot birds. Excellent. Excellent. I know he cut his show short Friday night because yep. he had to get to bed. Mm -hmm. It was going to be an early day. But that's awesome. Awesome news to hear for the kids. So we'll get them. Uh, maybe we'll talk to get him on and talk about how that went and how his season is progressing down there. There you go. So, but we're bumping up against it here, folks. We're gonna go ahead and wrap her up tonight. Um, it's been a strange night here in the studio. Computer, one of the computers is not working right, and the live stream kind of dove in and out on us a couple times. I, I don't know quite what's going on there with that, but uh, we made it through the show. And stay tuned next Sunday. Uh, you know, you guys have a, a great. Holy Week coming up here. You know, we got Good Friday coming up. We got yep. Easter Sunday. So spend time with your family. Uh, you know, make memories. Get outdoors if you get the opportunity, whether it's hunting, whether it's fishing, camping, what have you. Uh, it's a great time of the year to get outside and start doing some stuff outdoors. Yep, absolutely. So, anything else? No, uh, have a, like I said, have a good week. Have a happy Easter to everybody that's out there. Okay. All right. We're going to wrap up the podcast portion, folks, here tonight. Uh, if you want, we'll stay on here a few more minutes, and we'll talk a little bit online uh, for those of you here on the live stream. We're going to wrap it up and we'll be back again next week. For those of you that are on the live stream, if you got any questions, you want to talk a little bit, we got a few minutes here. We'll, we'll you, you, you know, it's weird that the live stream actually started over, but the counter is still where we're at. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand what happened with the live stream. But the people, weird. the people out there said that they can still see us. They're they're following along as to what we're talking about currently. So maybe this computer's on the fritz too. I don't know. <laughs> so, but we got uh, let's see, Jeremy Jacks, West Virginia Jeremy youth Jackson. season, youth season in Maryland, awesome. Uh, we have opening week of turkey season here in Virginia coming up. Katawi, uh, have an awesome week, fellas. Uh, who's there at Katawi? Is that Derek or is that Tony that's, that's shouting back at us there from Katawi? Uh, just make sure we know who we're Yeah, good, good, definitely good luck down there in, in Virginia, Jeremy. Definitely. Uh, Michael Flair from Phenomenal News talking about the tread. That, that was great, man. It was, uh, it was awesome. Uh, Jeremy also says, love the shield and the PSC in the background. Thanks, man. Uh, PSC, we can't say enough about them, man. They're a great, great company that, that help us here. And uh, let us uh, share it with them, and make they they make it able for us to get out in the field and do what we do. Yep. And uh, the shield, you're the shield wearer. I'm the shield wearer. I'm the scent lot guy. Yep. And so uh, we're both uh, we're on two sides of a great company. Uh, they're both uh, both uh, are owned by one place there, and uh, we just have a great opportunity to both of us to be able to work for the same company and wear what we like to wear. Exactly. So. Can't say enough about them. Uh, Lincoln Rome, can't wait to hear it. Have a great weekend, guys. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Tony's, Tony's down in, at the range. There hey, you go. All right. Hey, Tony, thanks for all your help yesterday, man. I had a great time hanging out with you guys down there, and I can't wait to get back down and do it again real soon. So, uh, Dustin Holly, me and Jeremy Jackson, we're on one heck of a flock. Trespassers screwed, screwed the pooch for us. Man, trespassers will do that. Don't you just hate that? You know what? I, I, trespassers, yeah, it, it's almost like being on public land and having those hikers. You know, that's the first thing I thought of. You know, we, we used to hunt state land here locally quite a bit. 
and we we used to deal with that all the time. You'd have people walk between your decoys and birds. Yep. You know, I mean, or decoy, between your decoys and where you were at. You know, and that's the thing. Jim Beasley. Jim Beasley's in the house. What is going on, Mr. Beasley? That's right. Um, speaking of, he's got my site. We're going to get the site set yep. up. We're going to get the 28s rocking, the Evolve 28s. That's something I'm... Um, I need to get my, my third axis set up. Jim's taking care of that for me. Right, exactly. And so, you got to get that put on the bow and you got to start shooting. Got to get out and get shooting. I've got I my range shot, set up. I would have shot today. But so. A little wet? A little wet. All right. Wasn't doing it. So. All right. Just looking here to see if anybody else has got anything to say real quick. Uh, for those of you guys uh, here in, in the area, uh, if you're looking to get some bow work done, get over to Spot Shooter Archery and check it out. Jim, take care of you. Great shop over there. We've shot out of there for for several years now and uh, can't can't thank him enough for what he does for us. Makes some great strings. We run his uh, his strings on all of our bows. And uh, I don't let anybody else pretty much work on my bow except him. And Dan Yasso and Dan's in town. <laughs> you don't say no to Dan. <laughs> no, I don't say no to Dan. So. I don't either. So anything else? Um, no, I don't see anything else on there. Well, Jim, you caught us at the end of the show. We're wrapping up and getting ready to sign off. So That's I'll, right. I'll get a hold of you later this week. Uh, for you guys, like I said, have a great Easter. We will uh, have that, that show on this week, coming week. I'll be monitoring live. So if you got any questions during that show, I'll try to chime in. That'll do it for us this week here on the Up North Journal. Y'all be safe out there, and we will be back again next week. Y'all take care.